Today's going to be a really fun day for us. We've been invited to collaborate with six other channels to talk about RV travel day preparation. It's going to show you exactly what we do as we you know, prepare and break down. And it actually just so happens we're leaving for a pretty big travel day tomorrow, so you get to see us do this in real time. Yeah, so the group that we're collaborating with includes uh, Wayward Wags, Brazen Brits, Happy Place Diaries. Yeah, Travels Abound, Travels with Delaney, and Tree Talker the Traveler. Some of you probably have seen some of their channels. So we hope that you kind of watch and pick up some tips and tricks from us, and we certainly would encourage you uh, to watch those other channels because everybody does things a little bit differently. So make sure to check us all out, and uh, hopefully we'll have some great information for you guys and help you on your journey. Anyway, let's get into it. The night before we travel, we fuel up the truck. The morning that we travel, we need to fuel up ourselves. So stick around and we'll show you how we prepare to travel. And be sure to check out the other collaborators' videos as well. All right, we're going to start here in the wet bay. And so one of the things you have to do initially is, you know, obviously understand is where you're going to the next destination. Are you going to a full hookup RV site or are you going to boondock or a harvest host or something like that? Because that's going to depend upon what you do with your fresh tank. So we're actually going to uh, two harvest hosts in a row on our way up to Indiana. And so we need to prepare for that. And so what we typically do is the night before, I will put a little bit of just a small bit of diluted, diluted bleach and water, about five gallons into the fresh water tank and then just let that sit overnight and then dump that in the morning and flush that out. So I've already done that part of it. So what I need to do now is put in fresh water for Pam and I and, uh, and Mika to uh, you know handle the two days of boondocking. So what I typically look at is obviously showers uh, and toilet bowl flush and those kinds of things and making sure that we have enough water. So uh, what I've found is that it's about seven gallons a day is, is you know, optimum. Wash dishes, uh, of course, we try and use paper plates as much as we can when we're going into a boondocking site uh, or, or a harvest host. And then for showers, you know, everything else that, that goes with that. So uh, so I'm going to put in seven gallons of fresh water into the fresh water tank uh, per day. And so that's going to be two days. And that, that should hold us over for, for those two days. So in my setup here, um, I've got these uh, water flow meters are called uh, Save a Drip, I guess it's called. You get them off of Amazon, they're relatively inexpensive. I have one on the freshwater side and then one on the black water side. This is good, not so much for everyday use, but when we are trying to fill the, uh, the holding tank. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zero these out. I'm going to shut the water off. I do have a valve here, so I've shut that off. I'm going to zero the, that out. And now I'm going to set the um, tank for power fill so we'll just look at the nautilus panel here as well and uh, it's really just kind of one piece like that that'll change it and now we're going to count and we're going to put in like i said 15 gallons of water as i'm filling up the fresh water tank to 15 gallons let's go back inside and check on pam travel day for me starts in the kitchen because i want to make sure to be finished with the water so that ken can disconnect outside but i make sure all the dishes are washed and put away sweep the floors, make sure anything on the countertop is secure. Sometimes I put it either in the oven or I put it in our bedroom. An important step is also to make sure all of the blinds are raised for travel day. As mentioned before, we use Save Drip flow meters to measure how much water we put in the fresh tank. All right, perfect. So we got 15 gallons in there. Now it's time to start the black tank flush, drain and flush. So again, we have another save a drip here, and this one's really important just because I'm gonna connect the black tank flush to that, and we need to count um, you know, how many gallons are going in. This is a 53 gallon uh, black tank, so we probably have about 25 gallons in there now. And so uh, what we're gonna do is drain that, and then we're gonna fill it up to about, I don't know, 35 gallons, and let that uh, flush out again. So as you can see, I also have another check valve here or cutoff valve, just important just to make sure that uh, 
uh, you know, you can cut the water off and without at having to run uh, all the way back to the hose bib back there uh, if you need to shut it off quickly. So let's get this thing started. Uh, just a, another important point is once you're done with this is don't leave this uh, connected with uh, pressure because you can wind up, um, there's, there's an air check valve, uh, release valve, uh, in our case, under the sink in the, in the bathroom. And if you leave that connected with uh, pressure on it all the time, it can cause that thing to, to leak. And we've had that uh, issue once before, so we will dis disconnect this when we're done. So let's get us started. What I typically do is I'll get a little bit of water going in there first, kind of rinse out some things, and then we'll go ahead and pull the black tank. And I'm not gonna show the contents of the black tank. That's just a little bit too much information. So while I'm dumping and rinsing the black tank, let's go back and check on Pam. Once I finished in the kitchen, I go back to the bedroom, I make the bed, I latch all of the doors, and I gather all of the trash. Okay, I drained the black tank, and so now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in about the 30 gallons of water uh, into the black tank just to kind of give it a good flush before we head it out, and then I'll put in another 10 gallons. One of the things you really need to also consider, so the tools of the trade, is not only using the saver drip like we had mentioned, but actually setting a timer on your phone. Based on our tank size of 53 gallons, I set the timer for about five minutes initially. Your tank size may vary, of course. So look at the save a drip and make sure you see how much water is going in and then you can adjust it accordingly. On my first flush, I'll aim for about 30 gallons. All right, we just hit 30 gallons and I got about 45 seconds or so left on the timer. So I think that's gonna be good. Uh, we'll just uh, shut the timer off here and then shut the water off. Like I said, remember to take out that uh, uh, black tank uh, fill when you're done. We are gonna put 10 gallons more back in once we're done with this, uh, just to have some water in the tank as we travel. Okay, black tank is done. Done draining, so now we're gonna go back in, like I said, put in another 10 gallons. And at the same time, I'm gonna now open up the gray tanks. And before I forget, do a timer for about three minutes. But you gotta have the timer, don't forget the timer. Without the timer, it can make for a bad day. Oh, I gotta go. All right, I'm gonna let the, the uh, gray waters uh, drain and I'm gonna start disconnecting the other water and uh, black uh, tank hose. And you don't wanna see that, everybody knows how to do that. So uh, we'll take it to the next part. Before we hook up, we still got some work to do back there with the electric and the water and everything else. But one of the things I uh, like to do, in fact, I used to do it the night before, but I didn't do it last night, is while well, I'm kind of getting other stuff ready, is I'll go check my TPMS and uh, to make sure the tire pressure is good before we head out. So it's actually a really good thing that we did check this morning. Um, we had new tires put on yesterday, and my guess is they didn't tighten the valve stems down. So we're supposed to be 110 PSI. Unfortunately, we are sitting like this. So one of the things I'll have to do is tighten the valve stems down and then put those up to 110, anyway, 108 to 110 PSI. So. Uh, good thing I checked that. That's just a, definitely a ritual you have to do before you actually start pulling away is make sure your tire pressure is good and, um, and our tire pressure is not good. So that's going to be something we'll uh, have to fill up and we'll show you that here a little bit as well. So we use a T there so we can shut off the water individually, both the house water as well as the black water uh, flush uh, hose. And of course I go color coordinated with using the black hose for the black tank flush because that's how I remember it because it's, uh, you know, the, the brain doesn't function as good as it used to. So anyway, we're getting that done. I'm going to disconnect the, uh, all the other water and then we're going to move on to electrical. Well, this part's got to be just really straightforward here. So we're just going to disconnect uh, our 50 amp surge guard power and everything and uh, put her away. Uh, we are going to a harvest house that um, we're going to have to use a generator first night. So I've already got a 30 amp dongle on the generator, 30 amp to from the generator to 50 amps. So that'll be easy to get set up when we get there. Something that's kind of also important, it's not really a travel day thing, but it's just, a, I guess, good uh, best practices. And that is to have a 90 degree uh, whether it's 50 amp or 30 amp uh, connector here. Uh, Alliance did not supply one initially when we bought the RV. I think they do that standard now. So we did order that again, Amazon. We can put a link below on that. But uh, definitely, it, it definitely helps and it takes the strain off of the power cord. 
All right, so we got the electrical all put away. We got the sewer all put away. Uh, put in buckets. And start for the shake on the camera. And this side's done. For anyone who doesn't know this already, the bed's a perfect place to put things that you don't want to move and be broken because they pretty much stay right there. Bathroom's all done. And I'm really glad I don't have glass shower doors to have to worry about anymore. I've learned with our rig, especially, things don't travel very well on this couch. So I generally like to keep them here. One step that you never want to forget is to lock the fridge. Once I've finished the inside, the last thing that I do is pull the slides in. And these are our goodie bars, some fruit, some snacks, water. And we have these step covers, which I absolutely love. Um, it keeps you from tracking in a lot of stuff. Although we, we take our shoes off, we pretty much don't wear our shoes inside. So that helps tremendously. But these step covers also help a ton. All right, another key component here is uh, make sure your propane is turned off. So uh, we only have the one tank. Uh, actually, to be honest with you, uh, because I took the tires, uh, took the RV to get tires yesterday, I shut the propane off didn't turn it back on I guess because we didn't cook with it last night but anyway make sure you turn this off for travel so now it's time to get air in the tires so we broke out the buy air you gotta love that Buy air if you're listening. You may have a new spokesperson here. I said I was never going to do the outside <laughs> stuff, but uh, never say never. We use a Polrite 2600 Superlight hitch. We love the fact that it weighs only 60 pounds and gives us about six inches of setback in the truck bed. So most people do a pull test uh, with their fifth wheel hitch. We do a tug test because it won't come out this way, but we have to make sure it won't bounce out. We're fully hooked up. We'll do a walk around the rig. We want to make sure that all the jacks are up. There's nothing impeding the tires, nothing hanging out, and we want to make sure that the awnings are fully in. Another little tip, um, in case some of you forget, you put your trash maybe in the back of your truck or something and you forget it. I've done that before. Well, maybe I've done that before, but yeah, I just put it on top of the truck. Drop it off at the dumpster as we pull out. Let's talk briefly about route planning. We'll cover this in more detail in a future video, but for now, since we don't have an RV GPS, we use apps like Waze, Google Maps, Google Earth, and a trucker app called Hammer, which helps us determine if there's any low overpasses. We try not to travel more than 350 miles a day, so if our next intended long-term destination is more than that, we'll utilize Harvest Host and Boondarkers Welcome as much as possible. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. We hope to see you down the road.